this video, we are going to talk about creating orthographic drawings. So what you will need is regular grid paper, which looks like this. You will also need a ruler, standard ruler. You will need a pencil with an eraser. And when you are drawing an orthographic projection, you always wanna make sure that you um, are drawing nice and lightly. That way, if you have to erase something, um, it's not going to be visible. For the purpose of my drawing, I am going to use pen just so that you can see it better but you will be using pencil. Okay. Then what we are going to do is we're going to find the midway point of our paper and draw a horizontal line across the middle. Now our paper is divided into four quadrants. We are then going to label the quadrants and the quadrants remain the same every single time that you draw an orthographic drawing. So the quadrants are as follows. This is going to be the top view of our object. This is going to be the front view of our object. And then to the right of that is going to be the right view. And up here in this quadrant, this is going to be called the isometric view. Now, depending on how big your object is, there will always be a scale to these drawings. For example, I could actually draw a building in this quadrant, I would just have to really scale it down. So at the bottom, there's always going to be a scale. This could be one to one. So if you have an object that's about this big, it will fit on this paper and you could do a one to one scale. If you have an object, for example, like this cup right here, which is bigger, I would maybe do a two to one, three to one, or four to one scale so I could fit the entire object in my drawing. We're gonna do a one to one scale. And this is how your paper is going to be set up every single time you do an orthographic drawing. We are going to build an object out of our linking cubes. And this is the object that I have built. So it is four cubes, one, two, three, four. If you have a part that sticks out like this, when you draw it, you're going to pretend it looks just like this. We're not going to draw this little part. So what we first need to do is determine the scale. And this object is small enough to fit perfectly inside my quadrant. So I am going to do a one by one scale. I can see three different views. I have a front view, which looks like this. And then we have a, a right side view, which looks just like this. This is our right side view. So for our top view, I have one, two, three cubes lined up side by side. And I, I can't tell how tall they are. So to me, they just look like a row of three. So I know you guys can see the depth and you know that this is too tall, but for the technical drawing, you can't actually see that, okay? So I'm gonna start out in my top quadrant, in the lower left-hand corner, I'm gonna make a dot. I know that this goes up one and over three. So one, two, three, goes down one and back over three. Okay, so I, I like to map out everything on my paper with dots before I actually outline it. That way I can check my work before I commit to creating a line. So that is my top view. Now, 
we need to make sure that the front view is aligned with the top view. So what I'm going to do is use my pencil and I am going to come from the very starting point or the starting dot and I'm going to make some dots coming down into this quadrant and that way I know that when I create my object in the front view it is going to be aligned with the top view because in reality if you're looking at this piece here's the top view when I look at the front view this piece does not get bigger it does not get smaller it does not shift to the right it does not shift to the left so it is aligned okay so here is my front view I can see that it is the same width as I drew in my top view so I already know that so actually I'm gonna come from this opposite corner and I'm gonna draw a couple dots down and this right here means that my piece needs to be directly in between this dot and this dot okay I know that it is three across on the front view and then goes up one on the right hand side so I'm going to mark out my object using my dots. Then I'm going to use my ruler. Okay, so here's my object. Here is my top view and my front view. This is the front view. Here's the right side view. So it's too tall and it needs to be the exact same height as what we have in our front view. So once again, it needs to be aligned. So I'm going to use that same dot method, carry the dots over on the line, and I know that these dots are going to tell me that this object does not get bigger, it does not get smaller, it is directly aligned with this object, and it is this height, okay? So it's already a clue. So this right side view is a single stack, uh, one on top of each other. This is my completed orthographic drawing that's to scale and aligned. Okay, we are going to then dimension our orthographic drawing because even though it is to scale, we still wanna add dimensions in here to make it very obvious how big these parts are. I'm going to start out in the top view and I'm going to always remain with my dimensions in the street. These lines right here are the street. You want to always keep your um, dimensions closest to the street. So that means, for example, if I'm dimensioning this, I don't want my dimension on top because that's further away from the street. So I want my dimension underneath because it's in between my object and the street and I want it closest to the street. I'm going to use what's called an extension line and that's going to be a little extension of the object line that comes out to tell you how uh, wide or how long that object is. So these are what is called extension lines right here. It's going to be an extension of the object line. And I need to say the overall length of this piece is, as you can see, two and a half inches. Okay, guys, I totally messed up on this part. Obviously, I'm not thinking, but wherever you see it say 2.5 inches, it is actually 2.25 inches. You can see here my extension lines, my dimension, and then also I'm going to add some dimensioning lines. Um, so just note that correction. Uh, for later on. So basically it says from there to there is 2.25 inches. Okay, so I have the extension lines, the dimension lines, and the dimension. Now, because I have already determined that width dimension, I do not need to repeat that in the lower quadrant uh, because that would be redundant. Okay, so we need to find um, <clears throat> a different dimension for each quadrant, okay? So the next dimension I'm going to measure is going to be this inside 
length right here, one and a half inches from here to here. So I'm once again going to extend, use my extension lines, and I'm also going to remain closest to the street. Like so. On the right side view, I am then going to dimension how tall the piece is because that is the only missing dimension. Once again, you wanna stay closest to the street, so it's going to be in this area, okay? Okay, I screwed myself up again. Yes, twice in one video. Uh, it's definitely 1.5 as I had previously stated. So that means the height of two equals the width of two. Okay, this is isometric paper. As you can see, it kind of looks like it has little diamonds on it. Isometric and grid paper are a little bit different. There are some facts here about what an isometric drawing does. And you can see all three of your orthographic views at the same time with an isometric drawing. You can see the top, the front, and the side view. Your isometric drawing is going to look three-dimensional, as if you could pick it up off of the page. You can only draw your isometric uh, drawing on isometric grid paper, so you're not going to be able to use the grids on regular graph paper to create your isometric drawing. And all of these isometric lines are at a 30 degree angle, okay? So if you can see on this paper, you have uh, vertical lines running straight up and down, and then you have lines coming in at this angle, um, and then also at this angle. So that angle is 30 degrees every single time. I'm going to always start right here at this corner, okay? So on the paper, I'm going to put a dot, you know how I love my dots. And that dot's going to represent this corner right here. Now, the front side is always gonna slant down and we're always gonna start with drawing the front view first. So I know that I have three blocks over, so I need to draw three blocks over. Then I'm gonna come up two blocks so I'm basically creating the outline of this shape. And then I'm gonna come over one block, go down one, and then back over two. All right, so now that I've mapped it out using my dot system, I'm gonna go ahead and outline this using my ruler. Okay, now we need to add in the top view, okay? So I know, looking at my piece, that the top view is just one block, okay? So it's one block tall or one block wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come from the same starting point, okay? And I'm gonna go back one block for all of my front view. I know that sounds confusing, but once you see it, you'll be like, oh. Okay, so there is my top view. You can see it's starting to look a little bit more 3D. The last part that we have to add to this is our right view. So that's our right view, and we know that that is a single stack, one on top of each other. And there is my isometric view. As you can see, this looks three-dimensional. So what we're going to do to make it so obvious for you is I'm going to color coordinate all of my top. Uh, is going to be one color. All of my front is going to be one color. And all of my right view is going to be one color. So I'm going to go ahead and color that. And then I will show you. Okay, so here is the final version of my isometric drawing and I color coded these. So you can see the top view is orange, the, oops, the front view is blue and the right side view is red. And then when you look over here, you got the top that, that is orange, the front that is blue and the right side that is red. So that is how you make an orthographic, isometric and dimensioned drawing.